Ah, well, here we are. Um, number 215, the color question again. I just reviewed and found we must have done this particular subject, I mean, on variations of, in relation to it, where I probably made you know, nearly the same comments uh, about 20 times, maybe. Just so you know, uh, Sheila, <laughs> but this is still dedicated to you. And um, before we start, though, I want to remind you that we have reached 2,500, our, our, our target, before we do another, another live show. So we're going to be doing one at 4 o'clock Saturday, March 6th, I believe is the day. So stay tuned. Notice the uh, thing on the screen that's probably more reliable than my words right now. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Sue Lipman, for your really nice donation. Um, and uh, uh, contribution to the cause. Um, and um, yeah, I think with that, we'll just move right along. I don't know what else I've forgotten. I hope you, hope you all had a very nice painting week. You know, I've found that this um, works better. That is a development of knowledge works better if you're working hard or if you're putting at least in some fairly significant time so a, a portion of your brain is sort of well dedicated to thinking about painting. Uh, I know for some of you, you actually are working regular jobs, and that gets to be a serious difficulty. Uh, but figure out how to get yourself that 10, 15 hours in. Uh, especially um, if any hours you can get in between uh, between seeing these videos. You know, bef before the next video shows up, it's really helpful. Um, if you're seeing these on a regular, everyday basis. Otherwise, you do it whenever you can. Uh, but still, working... Getting information, that's the, this is the Da Vinci thinking that uh, uh, it's the greatest, uh, what a calamity or whatever he said, when uh, theory outstrips performance. Um, I can give you information, but you won't actually be able to bring it into use if you're not working uh, at the time and then working it out afterwards, okay? Just giving, you know, teacherly advice. So let's look at the uh, question that uh, Sheila has, um, and she's she's uh, relatively new to our discussions. Um, which, by the way, I, I was reviewing a number of them today. Uh, I think, in particular, the one that she watched, number sixty-two, and uh, I really, um, uh, uh, you know, I I really do want to say that what we're doing is we're trying to get the discussion moving. To, to get this stuff out of our heads and out of books where people aren't there and live and showing you things and talking to you. I wish I could do more in that way. I mean, it's, it's quite difficult to put the time into to demos and stuff, but that's still not... I mean, I've done probably enough of that in the total package of videos here to get you moving. But, uh, uh, but I just, just keep remembering that's what we're doing. We're really trying to get that you know, get stuff put out in words, put these ideas put out in words with images and all that sort of stuff and get a conversation going that you can then refer to or use to compare with what you're learning elsewhere or whatever. For the purposes, though, as I said, the truth lies in the conflict of ideas. So for the purpose of getting yourself to a sure knowledge of painting and how to, how to, how to do what we do. So... Um, Sheila says, I've just... You keep saying hitting the right color note. She's from England. Uh, I've just watched number 62, and you speak about Dow and Munzel. Uh, that's Arthur Dow and uh, Munzel. Just wanted to know what you think about knowledge being power, i.e. knowledge and understanding of the way Munzel color theory works, enabling you to relate your color perception into practice by hitting the color note first as opposed to stumbling to find it. You're really on to something significant, and we have talked about it before, and I'm going to sp speak specifically about it with a couple images in a minute. Uh, let me just go down. I'm going to come back to this larger discussion, but let me just go down and show you where we've talked about it before. First of all, um, this is the list, the complete listing of YouTube's on uh, the videos on YouTube. I hope you can read that. Uh, in any case, if you dig around, you'll eventually find yourself in a place where there's a complete listing from 1 to 215. Uh, maybe even that may even be, I don't know if that's, yeah, I guess that's not inclusive of the, um, of the uh, uh, evolution of Impressionism series that I did, uh, four or five videos uh, a couple years ago, uh, which are lengthier and uh, pointed to a very specific subject. So hopefully you'll go dig those up too. 
But color videos include number 10, 53, 59, 66, 87, 103. Uh, in all, something, I said 20, but it looks more like 14 or so. Uh, maybe, what, 12 or 14? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yeah. So, uh, but these at least, minimally, these I've done. And we do the color conversation because it's not out there as much as it needs to be. But also because it's, it's a portion of the holistic Impressionist mind. And again, reminding you that Impressionism doesn't necessarily mean broken color and bad drawing. Um, by, by the way, uh, uh, it's funny how much um, um, we, we find ourselves in these little matrices. Is that the right word, matrices? Uh, of, 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 of definitions, you know. So what is Impressionism? Immediately this image comes to mind and then you're done, you know. I do prefer uh, the... Uh, I, using a word like impression, because the word impression has used been a lot, even Millet was using the word impression. And uh, so the idea of impressionism, uh, you know, was with the French, and what they were doing with trying to actually then say, look, don't you see what we're doing is just getting the, the, that the whole visual world is just a series of color value blobs, and we're just trying to organize them all. And that is, so we're just creating the visual impression, and we're not going into this world of the science of the uh, of, 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 of light direction and things like that, the science of the movement of light, as a theoretical science. So you understand that that was a limiting thing, which is why I talk about Max Meldrum and others like that. But to go back to the question, uh, you keep saying hit the, hitting the right note. So I'm going to talk specifically about that, even though I know I've done it before, and I use the word hit the note. It's a Boston School thing I hadn't heard anywhere else hit the note, but it's undoubtedly it's all over the place. I don't think it's specifically limited to them. So I speak about Dow and Manzel, and I want you to actually go to, I think it's number 66. Let me look that up. I don't think I included it on that list. But number 66 is where I talk about the cognitive sciences. So that would be Manzel and others. Dow has his own chapter. You can go find that somewhere, his own video. Uh, Arthur Dow, and I talk about him. That's one I reviewed. Actually, that's number 62. So, uh, but you, you all know that what I said about Munzel is he shows you how color works. So when you mix this color with that color, you get the other color and all that sort of thing and how, you know, you, how to get neutrals out of, out of, uh, uh, out of a, a, an alizarin and a, and, a, um, and a green, for example, and what kind of different neutrals you'll get by mixing those versus other things and, not, and, and rather even than mixing black and white, which you'd never do in that mindset. And uh, we find that the ideal world that we live in, if we, if we, if we just as, assume that everything is colored, black has a fairly minimal role, it is, but, on, but it is a useful role at times. Uh, so, uh, but what's good about Munzel, and all I was saying about that is, but for the most part, what we're trying to do is, is, is keep, live, keep live darks, live neutrals, keep them, they, every neutral goes in a particular direction. It's more purple or it's more green or it's more yellow or whatever. So keep that in mind that it's all about color all the time if you're actually trying to hit the note. <laughs> uh, let's talk about hitting the note. But, uh, but I do think knowledge is power. I, and I, you know, I, I always talk about naming the pig and that sort of thing. This, this, I think it was a German, um, uh, what, what a German uh, saying. You got to name the pig. But yeah, knowledge, uh, I mean, naming is a huge thing. Uh, and so... What, what I, Munzel color theory, well, what, depending on what you mean by that, but the Munzel, you don't have to do much. You just do a little bit of the work and you begin to realize that what he's talking about is how actual pigments mix. And, uh, uh, and uh, so it's, a, it's, it's perfectly good and a useful thing to do to go through Munzel color th theory. And then like most theories, forget everything you learned, so to speak. I mean, obviously you wouldn't want to forget everything, but but you don't live by theory. You live by playing with colors out there in space, right? Which gets us to the question of the search, which I'm going to talk about with these objects in front of us. Uh, but uh, but you do need something like that. You need to to play with colors. But for but before anything else, you want to talk about naming. You need to know that a color consists of value, intensity. That's the saturation chroma thing. And hue, which is the red, yellow, blue, and all the other color common things uh, uh, also, right? So you follow that if you don't know that, you don't know what part. Of, so you're going to hit a color note. Every time you hit a note, even if you just mix it on your palette, you're going to have to correct it. You're going to see that it's not right. Well, you're not going to see it. 
so that's going to be one thing. So that means you have to know whether it needs to be darker or lighter, whether it needs to be more chromatic, less chromatic, or whether it needs to be more red, more yellow, or more blue. And, and it takes two or three adjustments before you will hit the note, as it were, before you actually find the right note. But you haven't necessarily found anything if you haven't found the right note as it relates to the other notes in your setting. So say if you decide you have, you're going to paint a picture with such and such a red in it, and you can only reach that red, which is very beautiful as a rose, and you can only reach it and get its glory at a such and such a, a, a combination of, 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 of uh, chroma and, and lightness, and so you're saying, oh boy, that's the most featured color though. So, all right, let's see what I can do. And we'll try to live with that and still keep it the most featured color. And then everybody, all the other colors will tend to have to, if you use it as your anchor, as your touchstone, as your, as your setting, then all of the other colors have to be understated in relation to that or just simply relationally corrected to it. Okay? So that's a big deal about what hitting the note is, right? It's to get the note to be right in relation to the notes. So then we'd have this whole question of the search, which Tarbell talks about. And then Benson said that, that painting is just adjusting. You put down notes and you adjust the notes. What do you adjust them to? You adjust them to the set. You adjust them to the anchors. What's my darkest dark and lightest light? Those are dark and light anchors. What's my, what's my um, most chromatic note? That's, that's a hugely important anchor. Uh, and so... If you can begin to see that, maybe I've already summed it up. That's what I mean by hitting the color note. Uh, and but but don't don't be too upset about stum stumbling to find it. You're, so here's what you what, what Sheila says. Uh, enabling you this color theory, enabling you to relate your color perception into practice by hitting the note uh, first, as opposed to stumbling to find it. So. You know, you're not stumbling. What you're doing is you're putting it up on the canvas. So you make your, your first note. And to bring up pigs again, that first note on the canvas is a pig and a poke. It's just a note, right? Now, say it's your most chromatic note. You set it up there and look at it. And you say to yourself, i got to get that to be more. Can I get that any more chromatic, any more chromatic, any more chromatic? But you still don't even know what that note is until you have your darkest, dark, and lightest note. Let's say it was that same red that I just talked about in some rose or other. You don't know what that note is going to be until you have your darkest dark in your life. So you don't know what it's going to be in value. You just know that it's going to be the leader in terms of its, uh, of its intensity. So it has to live also between these other places. So, we need, so, so when are you not adjusting a note? If you want to call that stumbling, I would call it searching, okay? But, uh, but if you say stumbling, and that means you don't understand that the, when, you're, when you've hit a note, to adjust it, you have to make it, you have to say, is it a chroma problem? Is it a value problem? Or is it a hue problem? It should be more red, yellow, or blue. If you don't understand those things, yes, you'll be stumbling around. But it does take, typically, it takes about three swings at it to head a note. And that's not unusual at all. It's actually perfectly fine. I mean, and before that, when you don't know anything, it takes all kinds of messing. You'll put it up there and paint, draw with it, and it'll be wrong three days later. It'll be wrong four, it, the changes will be wrong four days later. <laughs> And you'll, it's just no end to that. So that's, that's the stumbling mind. And I like the idea of stumbling in the sense that you're stumbling in the dark, dark of ignorance. But no theory is going to give you knowledge that way. You're going to have to watch in front of you. If you're an impressionist, you're watching in front of you for the relationships to show up. So probably that's the best I can do with that. Uh, and, and I wish you well in, in searching that out, uh, Sheila. Oh, there's a, um, so, there's, um, so there's Monet. So we talk about hitting the note. You see that he has greens all over the place in here. And you can see that the greens over here are full of yellows. As I say, there, there are, the general impression is, is that there's a green that's full of yellows. The general impression here is that it's a darker green full of reds. It's a redder, warmer note overall because of the fire combination, the warms. And that somewhere down here, say, there's a blue version of the greens, right? Now, you'd say similar things about the sky here. Look at this, this the, the, the darkness and the intensity of this blue. And by the way, always assuming that this painting is not necessarily true to Monet, it's just what we're looking at right now, whatever the internet pops out for us. But you can see that the color differences between this blue and the blue up here is really significant, right? And your job is to adjust these colors until they're right to each other. Just this dark until it's right to the other near darks or the darks. Make sure it's not as dark as, is that really there, this one or this one? You have to find its place in the range, right? So we mean hitting the note. So uh, we say color notes and we mean color values, right? It's going to be the right value. 
and the right color and the color. But so we, we probably should properly call it the color intensity value note, <laughs> as I've been just saying, right? So, um, but you can see that what's happening here is these are the yellow sky notes. These are somehow, in this picture at least, these are cooler. Uh, they, they have the appearance of being lighter, but that isn't necessarily so. But, uh, and uh, or you can say again about this picture, here's the blue, or here are the blues. Uh, here are the reds and parts spread around through here. Uh, and here are the, shall we say, well, here are the yellows, and they're yellow scattered and scattered and scattered. Now, if you're Monet, you're talking about individual notes, right? You're talking about the spot here, but you're talking about the field here. And what the broken color guy is trying to do is get this combination of notes broken so that, you, so that the red, yellow, and blue will, if you want to say vibrate, that they will resonate in a way that flat notes don't do as well. So, this, so hitting this note, and it's very nice to do in landscape because you want a texture there. So hitting these fleck, fleck, fleck of yellow, and then fleck, fleck, fleck of whatever other colors are in there. I say yellow. Remember that each time you mix a note in here, it's got a va general value area, right? The, uh, the area is a general value. But the whole thing may move from warmer to cooler, as you see there. And so there's going to be more red notes, orange notes, whatever, down here, and, and more blue notes up here. And your job is always going to be, you know, make sure you maintain the unity of the value, and you get that by blurring your eyes. So you'll see a grand movement of value from middle tone, dark middle tone, to darker here, to darkest over here. Those are big things you always have to have in mind. And that's where some, some of my friends in the Boston Gamel, uh, friends who've come out of the Boston School background, know that the values are that important. If you can't get your value right, you won't get, your, you won't get the rest of it right. The color just comes, I found, when you hit the value right. And that's in the, you know, so this whole idea of use, you're searching for the note, you're searching for your ability to get the note, make sure the values are right. And again, say, what's my darkest dark and lightest light? And try to get the general tonality of the painting. This isn't a dark, inky picture. And when you get your painting up on the wall, you want it to not look dark, you want it to feel like this day. So you look at a different painting you have, and you'll see it's very dark, very, uh, you know, another one would be much lighter than this. That's the general tonality of the picture overall. And then you live in a world that has, has lighter and darker elements in it, that somehow between them maintain the unity of that one idea, the general tonality. Tonality is value, the general value. All right. So, okay, but let's, so that's, so, but you can see that each spot here, so you're talking to Camp, he would say every spot, uh, it was Tarbell, he said every spot has the right value and the right color, and it's in the right place. And by the way, that's what DeCamp also said, uh, painting, I, I guess who knows which of them said, <laughs> the Boston School guy said this. But the right color, the right value, in the right place, that's all there is to, to this game. Easy to say, hard to do. Easy to understand, hard to do. So um, I'm going to show you now a uh, uh, start by one of my students uh, uh, a pastime and uh, just show you what how she is taking this in hand. I know who this is. I don't know if you want me to say who it is, though. I don't think this is a public thing, uh, ma'am. <laughs> So I won't say your name. You, uh, I know you don't won't mind, but um, uh, but you can see what's happening over here. And this is the, her field. This is a little bit inky, I think, compared to what her real thing was, but um, her real setting was. But so here's her lightest note, and she's sitting down this note. All right now, remember everything is a speculation because it has no context. Keep remembering, Sheila, what hitting the note is. It's hitting the note that's right in the context, which means that's why you have to keep adjusting it. You can't mix it perfectly on your palette. You can make it, you can give your best shot, but um, you can't paint frequently, for example, if this is a, uh, if this is face in the window and it's as white as the piece of canvas you're working on, you'll never be able to hit the white note as white as this on your canvas. So isn't that interesting? Um, and the reason is because your canvas is never going to be facing the window like this is facing the window. So the canvas, the white on the canvas can never be as bright as this thing here. And you'd probably be able to see that that's probably so already, right, that this is going to be darker than that. Uh, by the way, even to get any color at all into a uh, white, a light like this one, you have to make it darker than the canvas or it won't show color. You also have a general plan of trying to hang on to your lightest lights for use as accents and things like that. Perhaps in high, highest lights or something you that in general weren't showing up. Highlights, perhaps. Um, although I test all those things as we go. But so what you can see is there's a green blob here, a red blob here, a light, the lightest light is here, 
the most chromatic note is perhaps, probably, it is here. And then you have a bunch of middle tones that are neutrals and um, some other lights, some of which are starting to move down as more, more less, less light lights. And all your job is to hit the note is to, what's this note? Now, this is just a generalization at the beginning. But you hit this note as best you can. And you can say, you could just look at this and put, try to put it up there. It's fine. That would be the nearest thing you're ever going to have to that opportunity. Because after that, it doesn't make any difference if it matches this. What matters is if, if this to this is right, which means if this to this is right, right? So as soon as it's on your canvas, you can now see the ensemble of color notes. Okay? And that's what matters to the Impressionist. So this perhaps, this is your darkest dark, and, and maybe that's similar to it. It looks like this is a warmer one, and that's a cooler one, these different areas. And, uh, and so you're going around here with the, you're hunting for the notes that are going to be useful to you. So you want your richest uh, red, you want your lightest light, you want any significant major colors, especially ones you think you might have troubles with. And, uh, and you want to just put, put a little time into writing them into each other. I probably would have pushed the redness of this a little further to the right. See how that sits way over there, going to this? So it looks like we could use a little more intensity. That's the kind of adjusting you would be making. Even up here, I'd probably consider moving this into that uh, to get the cool into red, uh, into this redder note, thinking of that more or less as one note. But that's neither here nor there. The, uh, the little reds here, you know, you may not need them right away, but it, there's a point at which there is a red system. So that's this to this to this to this. And then to whatever extent it's true, it's this and some other stuff in here. But that red system has to be right to itself and it has to be right to the general impression. And each of these spots has to have the right amount of a light effect compared to this light effect. And so it goes, right? So those are all, that's, that's the entire idea of the need to adjust notes. We put down, notes down and we adjust them until they're right to each other. And if you can isolate for yourself the problem of color relationships, just floating like this, and begin to get yourself to see colors in relation and, and tilt them and tilt them and keep adjusting them, uh, you're going to be, begin to have some confidence that, uh, for, for the phase when the drawing starts. I'll leave, uh, I'll leave what, one last point on here, and that is when we start bringing colors together, for example, down here we'll bring this, well, let's say here, we'll bring this dark over, this dark here, we'll bring it over to cut this. That's the rest of the color note. When you, so you have the color notes spotting around, just looking like they're about right to each other, this one being yellower than that one, and a little, perhaps a little bit, I don't know if it's lighter or not, maybe not lighter, maybe, maybe similar. Uh, and this one being, and this one being uh, darker, uh, and, and, a bit, and a bit redder, this being orange, oranger, but not as orange as this, and so on. You're seeing these sets. You see them. You see them all at once, and it's quite easy to adjust them. This one feels like it needs to be fairly heavily saturated with yellow, as you not make these relationships. And then it's not unusual at all to have actual movements of yellow, yellow orange to orange orange to a redder orange. Right? That's very common. But don't do it out of your head, and don't do it in theory. Just look at it. You can see the set. Uh, but what happens next is you bring these together, and now it's this plus that, or this into that. So when these two are sitting together, they have to perform whatever that color thing is as compared to what these two do when they get together. So there's this, now there's this, this unit compared to this unit or any other units that are, that are, that are of value. And uh, so the rest of your color note is what happens where that, when, when, the, when the sort of, the, shall we say, the, the joint hits. Then what happens to these joints and how they work in comparison with each other. So that's more or less our game, um, uh, Sheila. Uh, I hope that helps. Now, I'm going to just walk you over to, um, to make sure it's clear to you what we mean by drawing. And so you can see a lot of, um, what, you know, you see in this area particularly, you see that sort of loosey-goosiness in a lot of the area here. But he's very articulate at key places such as this here, or perhaps this, or this, or this. So the Impressionist is, once you're past Monet, once you're to the Boston School, you're now talking about combining um, edge uh, early and often, right? And edge really meaning the silhouetting, contrasting points. So, um, so he's got all these these color reds related to each other wherever they show up, right? You see all that stuff. That oh, that's just it's just so inviting. By the way, when you're trying to figure out what red this is, you back yourself up mentally, and you'll see reds here and here and down here, and you'll suddenly say, oh, oh, I'm beginning to see what I've got here. And you're adjusting all. If you do nothing more than adjust those four notes to each other. 
But adjusting is the key here, not matching notes, right? So that's where you really want to watch out for your the, the sort of the sight size mentality. There's nothing in nature that this is that. This is not the model. This is not the model. Nothing in here should be presumed to be exactly like the model. I'll talk about that another time. I have talked about that in other videos, uh, at, per the Gamel teaching, the sight size teaching, and why it doesn't why it doesn't work out. But um, but you can see that the shadows here, there's color movement, so there's a, there's a way bluer note here than here, right? You can feel that? The movement, so the warm and the mid-tones in the shadow, they're much warmer. The darks are cooler. They're still warmish, but they're cooler. This is the coldest of these notes, because you can feel this progression of notes, right? So we think of these as notes, and part of what you're doing, you want to have this note right somewhere where you can actually say, right there, what is it doing? You know, and that's when you prove it further by having it do what it's doing against this one. Wait, because it has a job to do, like for in values. When it hits this one, it's got to leave that light right in comparison with, say, the brilliance of this light contrast. Okay, and and this one is going to be greater. This one's going to be greater yet. This one's being greater because the background is about the same, but therefore the lights are doing the job of being darker, of being more lit. Well, these are less lit. Well, this stays the same. Other places you might get that same effect by using by having dark darks. Uh, for example, this light effect is not hugely dissimilar to this one. It, it's not exactly similar, but you can see the contrast here is similar. It's just that it's doing it at a different value range. This is really, really dark, and there's this darker middle tone. And so the effect to your, they get to your eye somewhat similarly. I would argue that perhaps this portion gets to your eye before that one does. But that's just a discussion that you're having with yourself as you go through a picture. So I'm hoping that's coming across to you. I think that's what I have for this one. Um, but if you'll just review that, um, if you'll just review that uh, list uh, of color videos, to which I've just added another one. So this is number fifteen, this, as far as I know, of the color video list. Uh, and all of you who are looking, somebody else asked me about fleeting effects. And I'm going to talk about it. But there is a video on fleeting effects, in case that person is here talking to me. And uh, that video literally is one seventeen, number one seventeen. I have uh, also two on memory drawing, which is 37 and 162. One is color memory, and one is uh, memory training, which is having a model hold a pose for one minute, that sort of thing, uh, is, is included in that, I believe, in that discussion. So, um, all right. Well, okay, uh, thank you again for all your uh, uh, comments. Been a lot of nice things coming in. Uh, I really love it when you bring ideas into the game, uh, want to talk about something. Um, so keep those kinds of things happening. Thank you for all the donations. Uh, again, keep on sharing. Appreciate that whenever you uh, subscribe, we just share and all the rest. So, All right, and now keep on remembering that we're going to do on March 6th, we're going to do this live thing, thanks to reaching the 2,500 uh, uh, subscriber threshold which I'm absolutely looking forward to, and I know we're all going to enjoy it together. So, as I said, get your questions ready. Um, get your friends that you don't know about these to watch with you if they're inclined to. Uh, and, uh, yeah, let's just, let's just have some fun together trying to sort out the kind of stuff that I've seen. I, I, well, let me just end with this last thing. I've, what I've seen is all I'm talking about. I can't tell you the things I haven't seen. <laughs> I can't pretend I'm the know-all, be-all in painting. I'm not a historian either. I'm not trying to tell you about the this world and that world and this world and that world. It's one of those reasons I'm not really inclined to talk about paintings as a historical phenomenon. Except, of course, as I found them useful to me. Okay, But just keep that in mind. I, I, I'm not the Impressionist. I'm not truly a Boston School Impressionist, although I'm closest to that than anything. There's an element of the Sargent, the Zorn, and a bunch of other things that come with the territory. But uh, I've never been a pursuer of those things. I'm just trying to find best practices. Uh, and from the beginning, it was always my assumption that if I can't paint what I can see in front of me, I'm not going to make an imaginative picture worth a hoot, <laughs> especially in that authentic way of the truth of things that the old guys, um, the, the best of the best, uh, did. So I put my, and I suggest all of you as students, put your nose to the grindstone, so to speak. And just get good at drawing, get, drawing forth the beauty and truth of what you see in front of you. Uh, so, all right. Um, but that's a disclaimer, right, for those guys who, who want me to be uh, all pontificating or, um, or you know, pr pronouncing great, profound absolutes. I'm not that guy. I'm just talking like a guy who's traveled 
the mountains a bit and I'm coming down and I'm saying, well, watch out for this and there's that over there and all that sort of stuff. I've just seen some things that you younger guys wouldn't have seen yet. And to the, ex to the degree that you actually re respect my work, you should be here. If you don't respect it, you should be somewhere else. So, all right. And um, great. All right. You guys have a good few days and I'll see you in just a little bit. All right.